I first became interested in working with tinnitus patients way back many, many years ago when I began my graduate studies in audiology. I always found tinnitus to be fascinating and I, I found that people who have tinnitus certainly have needs that aren't being addressed uh, in a proper manner. So I've been doing this clinically for 30 years now and um, almost on a daily basis where I've been seeing tinnitus patients and working with them and, and recognizing that a tinnitus patient needs counseling and needs other therapeutic intervention in a, a variety of ways and that the important thing is that we be very flexible and that we treat in each person as an individual. There's a lot of challenges with tinnitus treatment and part of the reason there are so many challenges is that there are so many different things that can cause tinnitus, number one. Number two, every individual reacts to having tinnitus in a different way, just as every individual would react to having pain in a different way. Some people have high pain thresholds, others have low pain thresholds. Many people that have tinnitus can completely ignore it. Other people are tremendously bothered by it. So I think one of the biggest challenges is realizing that you have to treat people as individuals, realizing that tinnitus is a symptom that triggers a lot of emotions, a lot of fear. And so recognizing that you're going to have to address the person not only in terms of their physical needs, but in terms of their emotional needs and, and giving people space for allowing themselves to grieve about having lost their hearing, about having tinnitus, having lost some of the capacity to sit around and, and relax in quiet. You have to let the patient experience that, but then we have to make sure that our patients realize that they're not doomed. This is not something that there is no help for or that there's no hope for. Even if we can't cure tinnitus, we can do things to help our patients realize how they can allow their brain to suppress their tinnitus. And we have to, in doing that, address their emotional concerns, allow them to realize that they're not crazy, they're not weak, they have something going on that's abnormal and that they can, that they're reacting in a manner that may be contributing to some of the problems that they're having. So it's our job as professionals to provide them with education and to give them the kind of information they need to allow their brain to function in a normal manner and to suppress this very, very annoying signal that they're receiving. So if we're going to work with a patient and provide them with a pretty comprehensive tinnitus management program, we have to recognize that it's going to entail both very extensive counseling, and by counseling I mean educational counseling so that they understand what's going on in their auditory system, that in most cases the reason they have tinnitus is related to the fact that they have a hearing loss. And so, and so we need to educate them about that. We need to educate them about what their brain is doing that's making it lock in or focus in on the tinnitus. So education becomes a very important component. But then another very important component of tinnitus management is some kind of sound or acoustic therapy. Because we want to provide the patient with some kind of background stimulus that will mingle or mix with their tinnitus so that it allows their brain to not focus directly on the tinnitus. We're not necessarily trying to distract a patient away from their tinnitus, but we're trying to provide the brain with multiple stimuli so that the brain can turn down its contrast between silence and the, the tinnitus that a person perceives. This sound therapy can come in the form of hearing aids, noise generators, music, home background signals such as a fan, a television, a radio. So there's a variety of means of delivering sound therapy, but sound therapy can be very important in assisting, in, in going along with the counseling that we're providing so that, the, so that we're working both on the brain and on the ears at the same time and providing the patient with a, a more comprehensive solution to allow them to cope with this tinnitus. 
I think there's a lot of hearing healthcare professionals that are that become afraid when they have a patient sitting in front of them that's upset about their tinnitus. I think that there's this mystical aspect to tinnitus that makes some hearing healthcare professionals think that they're not qualified to deal with these patients. I don't agree with that. I think that there are some who feel that unless I take extensive coursework in tinnitus, I'm not qualified in helping the patient. I think that all hearing health care professionals understand the basics of tinnitus. I think that there is some training, some basic training that should be involved so you can understand the relationship between hearing loss, tinnitus, stress, emotions, things like that. Once that understanding is there, then I think as a hearing health care professional, you have an ethical obligation to try to at least begin the process of helping a person cope with their tinnitus, recognizing that the majority of people who have tinnitus are able to cope with their tinnitus fairly easily. So I think that the professional needs to understand, let me understand the basics. Let me know what the tools are out there that are available. And very importantly, the professional does need to understand that if, I, if I'm not making progress with the patient, who should I refer the patient to? Does the patient need further medical care? Do they need a psychologist, a psychiatrist? What kind of help should they be getting? Are they in need of medication? Well, the, the hearing health care professional may not know the answer to that, but there are other professionals who do. So if you can be honest with yourself as a professional and recognize that we, each one of us don't know everything and that if you can recognize when the patient needs to be seen by an, another professional, you're going to be serving that professional in a positive manner. So understanding the basics, having tools to offer to the patient and recognizing your limitations and also knowing how to assess progress is very important and should allow really any hearing professional to be able to start with the tinnitus patient.